you know, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you, Sifu Gary. Um, well, maybe tell people if they don't know who you are, like, um, you know, who you are and, and kind of what you do, basically. Um, well, well, you basically, uh, all it is, I'm just Sifu Gary. It's just Gary McKenzie, really. <laughs> people, <laughs> you call me Sifu. Um, but, uh, yes, the, the art form that I am involved with is the Wing Chun um, style of Kung Fu. Um, I've had um, basically two teachers. The first one um, was when I first started back in 1982 was Simon Lau. Mm -hmm. And I trained with him right until 1990. And then after that, right later on in um, 96, um, I broke up my training with uh, Sifu Ip Ching mm. in Hong Kong. And um, and and obviously he, he passed away um, a few years ago. Actually, um, 2020 he passed away. So now I'm I'm the long ranger now. Mm. So that's basically my weekend journey. Wow, fantastic! So I mean, part of what I want to do is to share with people like how mm. kung fu changed their lives. You know how kung fu has kind of made a difference. So I mean, take us back like where you grew up, like. I mean, I, I did start watching an interview, but I was kind of, I didn't want the plot to be ruined, you know? So I was like, I was really engaged, but I was like, oh, maybe I better turn it off because I kind of want it live, you know? Um, but I, I did catch a bit about your your beginnings, but maybe tell people if they're coming from a different source, like, yeah, how you got started. Right, right, back, from the, right back from the beginning? Yeah, well, like where you grew up, you know, like, um, mm. yeah, how you how you got exposed to martial arts. Yeah, well, I'm born, I'm born and raised in um, Hackney, um, London, East, East London. And um, you know, back in those days, in the, in the um, early seventies, early to mid seventies, you know, as I, as a kid growing up, um, it isn't uh, well, it's, it's quite bad now, right? Now it's knife crime. But um, mm. back in those days, right, you had to be able to put your hands up, you had to be able to fight, right? So when um, me in my school days, I was um, I was known for not having been able to control my temper, so I was always involved. I was always getting fights all the time. I didn't know anything. I didn't know how to fight, but I was just was getting in fights all the time and then um but i was in in those days in the 70s the thing right was the kung fu series um you know with david caradine mm. and that's what we do on a daily basis so that was um you know what my interest to learn how this martial arts system then later on we heard about bruce lee mm. and um as 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 a childhood, um, you don't have this now, but it, they really should have it right. There was a cinema that was devoted to kung fu movies in Stone. Oh, wow. it's, it's now it's now a mosque, but it used to be uh, called Asher Cinema. We used to go there every Sunday, and watch uh, the Sunday matinees, and watch all the kung fu movies. And, and that is when I saw um, Wing Chun for the first time in about 1978. The movie mm. called, called Warriors Two, mm. and uh, I thought I want to learn that system. Right, but at the time, um, to learn Wing Chun in the in the in the mid seventies, you can learn it. Um, but if you learn it right, um, th there was four main Wing Chun sifus. Uh, uh, one being Simon Lau, other being Victor Khan, other one being Austin Go, and other one um, being um, Nino Bernardo. Those are the four main ones in London teaching um, Wing Chun. And um, you can go to these classes, but um, you, you know, I, I, the, the, the attitude was right. Yes, it, being a, a non-Chinese uh, going to these classes, you, know, you 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 wasn't really. I felt wasn't really taught much um, in 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 those classes, but it was the beginning. Um, so I jumped a little bit because we, before that, because we couldn't, we, you couldn't find any Chinese martial arts. I had to sort of, like I said, I had to go into other martial arts like Taekwondo, is where I really started um, mm. my martial arts, my career. I stayed in that for a long time during my teens. And then after that, later on, right, it was boxing. And I had a little, uh, um, a little bit of amateur boxing. And then when I was 17, then I came across um, this program called The Way of the Warrior with um, Simon Lau. Um, and he was in the Kung Fu part of the series. Um, and, you know, I, I saw his Wing Chun on, on, on the program. I mean, you can see clips of it on YouTube. And that's what attracted my attention. Found his school straight away, and I enrolled my, myself and my elder brother into the class. And we stayed there um, up until 1990. Um, and then he um, he actually closed the school down and moved someplace else. So I, I just, after that, we just sort of fizzled out. Mm. Well, my love for winter was always still there. Uh, and um, But I knew if I really wanted to continue my the winter um, journey, 
it's not it's not going to be in the it's not going to be in the UK. Mm. Right? Um, and what was happening around that time, I thought, okay, if, if I, I, I'm going to have to go to Hong Kong at some stage. So um, I found um, my current um, well, well, not current. My, um, um, I saw him yesterday. My wing, uh, my my Cantonese um, teacher fixed a pyre. And he started being the Cantonese language. And around that time, many Sifus would come over, right, and do seminars. Um, it would Ip Chun, Sifu, Ip Ching, uh, Choi Son Tin, and Wong Song Leung was coming over and doing seminars. And when those um, Sifus came over to do seminars, um, um, Victor would take me to them. And I really just went there just to just to um, listen to the Cantonese language and and practice my Cantonese and look at some Wing Chun as well. And um, just when, when I went one time, um, I met Yip Ching for the first time and I didn't get a chance to speak to him. The second time I bumped into him in Chinatown and I had some Cantonese. I did about, had about two years of Cantonese then. And, um, you know, I was introduced to him by uh, Samuel Kwok and, um, you know, um, I thought I'll use some Cantonese now. So I introduced myself and he was blown away that he could actually speak to someone wow. um, who wasn't Chinese. And um, straight away he invited me. He said, listen, have you ever been to Hong Kong? He said, no, have you ever been to Hong Kong before? So listen, if you ever come to Hong Kong, you can look me up. So I booked my flight that night. And, wow. and a couple of months later in Hong Kong. Amazing. And that's how it started. Wow, that's fantastic. So, I mean, is there anything about Kung Fu opposed to uh, doing like a sort of competitive, like combat sport, like boxing or Taekwondo? Was there anything about a non-competitive combat art that appealed to you kind of over sort of a more competitive one? Um, you, you see, the, the competitive arts when I was when I was in those work, like the, the taekwondo, I was always getting disqualified because in those days it wasn't full contact in taekwondo. It was it was a point scoring mm. thing. You had to use um, control and minimal contact, and you, you know no face shots. And I was getting disqualified a lot. So that's why I went to boxing because boxing you, you can land you know land shots. But I always wanted kung fu. You know, I always wanted, uh, yeah. and then when I saw Warriors 2, and it was, oh, oh perfect, Wing Chun's the one for me. So then we started with that. And that was okay, you know, training at, at the Simon and Marshall Academy and the Chi Sao was quite aggressive. And, you know, they were very, very, not quite very aggressive. You you know, it was more like a fistic of really landing the shots and really going in. Um, but then after when that school closed in 1990, and, and, and okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to have to go to Hong Kong. So I always wanted to learn um, that. But, um, Competitive, um, yeah, even at Simon Lines, it was quite competitive, but it wasn't that you was going there to to, to get trophies. It's just that mm. there were sort of rivalries in that, in that particular school at the time. <laughs> yeah, I heard it was Which, quite tough. Uh, I mean, it, it produced a lot of great British you know, instructors, one of which I started with. Um, but like I heard, I mean, tell tell me a bit about some of the sort of things that went on in sort of early Simon Lau, <laughs> circa 1985 or something. Well, around around those around those times, we see there was this thing about, you know, you know, um Tekun in Cantonese meaning to, you know, we could technically mean kick the club, but basically right, challenge challenge it mm. other clubs. Right, so this was going on quite a bit, right? Um, you, you know, James Sinclair, my my Si Hing, you know, Wai Po Tang, my Si Hings, right? You know, um, you know, they, they were involved in quite a lot of these 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 um, challenge bouts, you know, with other mm. schools, mm. right? And, um, and and that's where you got your rotation, right? Because if you got a rotation as a good fighter, right, and you know, your school, you know, got a good name. So this is what's happening quite a lot, even at my school. When at my school. Um, when I opened uh, my own Wing Chun school, I had some people flop on me and turn up at my school. Oh, really? You know what I mean, and, and wanting to, um, you know, close my school down. Sure, sure, sure. You know, um, I, won't, I won't mention who the name is. <laughs> you know, I'll mention I think you told me another off time. camera. I think I remember, but I'll keep it, I'll keep it stum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, so someone he, he, he turned up at my school and, and um, you, you know, we, we we had to tell him what show what time of the day it was. <laughs> you know, because my because my school was a fighting school. The guys there they really were up for that sort of thing. And what we did in in our in our in our day to establish the school, um, I, I put my school in, in in the full contact kickboxing bouts. Oh, okay. Right. So that so so so. so 
we always and they had rules. You had to you had to do eight kicks above the waist. But obviously, Wing Chun, you're not kicking above the waist. Sure. So we just tried to get them out of there, knock them out, but before <laughs> in the first right, round. Okay. Like <laughs> you got to get the kicks above the waist. So listen, yeah, we're we're getting we're getting we'll there. Get, we're getting but there. We just <laughs> <laughs> We never kicked above the weight. We, we just tried to just get, you know, low to just try to, you know, finish the fight. Quick. Wow. You know, but it was all about experience back in those days, right? So that, those are the sort of challenges we had. There was, it was more, uh, not, um, you know, competition. It was more like schools challenging schools mm. um, in, in, in those days, mm. you know, um, to establish your school, especially if you had a, a winter school around the corner from you. You, you 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 know you you know someone would come and you know challenge you to say listen yeah. oh you're not doing it right you know and whatever yeah. it's all that kind of nonsense yeah yeah I guess it's it was right taken now. from now people do it like this yeah it's just people keyboard like keyboard version yeah exactly yeah I mean um yeah. I guess it was also still happening in Hong Kong a lot right in the seventies the rooftop uh, challenges you know was an element I mean get I mean what do you feel about like testing Wing Chun like how, is there a way to do it that's respectful is there a way to do it that's kind of like actually is you know you can learn from it or do you think I mean what is your view on like obviously at the time they're just trying to it was a business thing right but also there's an element of like okay mm -hmm. maybe some of our stuff doesn't work maybe we've got a even my Sifu Wan you know he changed a lot because of his experiences and I'm mm -hmm. sure you have as well so I mean what do you think the best way to kind of test things are and, and refine Okay, right. Um, uh, first of all, a little, a little um, 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 correction, right? I, mean, I think the rooftop st uh, fights, fights, and that lot, they stopped actually in the late sixties. Oh, they okay. never really spilled. Up. They never really spilled. It spilled over to the seventies, really. Mm. Um, mm. In Hong Kong, and the reason why, because um, according to my secret, right, the Hong Kong government put, you know, they put an order out that like, this thing got to stop because right, they were on the sure. rooftop. And and you know um, what the, the the deal was because you know with our Chinese friends right if you win you got to win something it's not like mm. you say I, I won the prize like, okay what did you win you know sure. what's the prize you know what sure. I mean? it's it's, uh, it's like with, even with gambling they don't play a game of cards so like, I won okay oh you won the game but what did you win yeah 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 they, exactly if, if someone has to lose something yeah and someone yeah, has to yeah. get something. yeah so yeah, with, yeah. You know, so with those so with those rooftop bouts if you lost the fight. You had to change your style. Oh, really? You can't, you can't just say, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm a Hong guy and you're Wing Chun, and the Wing Chun guy beat me, so I'm still going to do Hong guy. Right, it, it, you know, sure. It, it, it's, it, there's a lot of pride involved in these things, you know. There's, there's a lot of um, honour in, in this sort of stuff. So losing was not an option. Mm. So if you lost and you didn't want to change your style, then there was something else you had to do. Mm. Right, and you if you see some of the old kung fu movies, they hearken to this. Where they say, "Okay, then what you can do? You got to stand like this, and you got to walk between my legs. You got to crawl between my legs." Oh, okay, like a so shame you have, thing. You have to, yeah, you have to lose something. You yeah, know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Why, and, and, and that's why these people fought with such, these guys fought with such passion because mm. losing was not an option. Otherwise, you mm. either have to change your style, or you have to just, like, walk between the legs like a like mm. a dog. Mm. Oh. And that's why it's called the rooftops. Jump from one roof to the next. Oh wow! Really, jeez. And, and some people, and some people didn't make it. Wow, really. Right? And that's why the police got cracked down on it. So listen, look, this has got to stop. Mm, man, you know what I mean. This, this sort of stuff got to stop. You know what I mean. So it was, it was, it was that serious. And that's mm. why now, in it, really in Hong Kong now, you, where do you ever see a fight? You would never see a fight because if they call no. two people fighting, you both get arrested. It doesn't, doesn't matter who was in, who was, who was wrong, who was right. You're fighting, yeah. fighting you both get arrested. They're very yeah. strict on that and they enforce it. You know, yeah. but going back to your question about test, about testing, um, how do you test it respectfully? Um, see, see for, 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 so for me, the, first, the first thing you've got to do is, is say you're not testing the system, mm -hmm. right? That's the, that's the attitude you've got to have. You're not testing the system, right? Because what it is, right, is that was the style of a substance. You're testing yourself. Mm. Right. So what it is, right, is Wing Chun and any martial art for that matter, is just a tool. The tool cannot work on its own unless someone's using it. Mm. And if the tool is used wrong, then you don't blame the tool. Mm. And it's what people do two times, you know what I mean? It's hey, my system's better than your system. No, it's, it's it's not a matter of that. What it is is just you're not using the tool properly. Mm. You know, or you're not using this tool the tool skillfully enough. Yeah. Right. 
um, and and that's and 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 that's and that's why um, you're not effective. You're not effective. Not the stars not effective. You ain't. Mm. You know. So therefore, right, Wing Chun has getting a lot of flack, mm. right? And, and and like you say, you know, to, you know, test and see what works and what don't work. No, it all works. It's that you, you don't work. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, and, exactly. And, and, and you got and you got to ask yourself, why is it you don't work? Mm. And 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 what you do right by by testing it is you're testing your weaknesses. Right. Mm. What are you weak in? Right. Mm. You, and and that, and that could be, um, it even could be putting the art aside. It could just be mm. your conditioning. Your mm. conditioning could lose you the fight. Mm. You know, your your resistance to taking punishment could lose you the fight. Mm. As they say in Kansas, they say, yeah, damn, yeah, yeah, damn, you let Your guts could lose you the fight. You mm. could be a very skillful person in the art, but because you've got no nuts, you've got no balls, mm. you're not going to fight nobody. You know what I mean? Mm. So it is right. All these things, right, is when you get in there with somebody, you find out about yourself, you know, mm. and that is the whole key point of martial arts. It's not about trying to defeat others. It's trying to really find out who am I? Mm. You know what I mean? And you only find out who you are under pressure. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, many people say this. I mean, um, in my personal life, right, when I, when I was a bit of a naughty boy, you know, you you know, you 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 go out with, with with a group of guys, and they said, "I've got your back, I've got your back." And when the fight You're goes sure. down, you look behind; they're, they're not there. <laughs> they're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's when you realize, oh, is that, is that what you're about now? <laughs> so you're not really about that. Right. Yeah? So, so it's got to be all levels of testing, not just um, testing the skill. Now, on the but on the skill level, right? What you what what I do and what I what I try to do with my students. Right is make friends in the martial art community. Yeah, that's what you do. Mm. Right. So what it is, right? Everyone who's practicing martial arts is you, nine times out of ten is a good individual learning the martial art to 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 better themselves. They're not learning it so I can I could just um, how can I say lord it over others. Yeah. 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 So what you do, you know. Um, hence why you know um uh, your your see for one come long. You know who I call Chimboy. Right, you know, um, and, and, and with classes of a, a, a seafood who I respect immensely and a very, very dear friend of mine, um, you know, opened the door to me, even though mm. what's the name? I'm from another, I'm from another um, school. Mm. Because when you come with a correct attitude, listen, I'm coming there to, I'm here to learn. I really respect your martial art, and 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 how can I improve myself? You know, and, and can you help me in any in, in, in any way on my journey? Um, I'm not here to steal anything. You know, I'm not here to nick anything. And and after what is knowledge? You know, knowledge is to be given out. You know, you don't hold mm. it. It's no good that mm. way. Mm. And and when you come with the right attitude, people open doors for you. Mm. Because my enemy is not another martial artist. It is is my enemy is on the street, mm. and I've got to prepare prepare for him. Mm. But if you're closed minded, and 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 you stay in your box. Right, like in my school box, mm. right? And, but you don't go to the wider community, mm. martial art community, right? And 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 make friends and share. You, you're always going to be lacking. Mm. And when it comes to combat, the one who cannot adapt mm. to situations, or the one who will lose. Mm. If you're just stuck in a, in 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 a, in a box, and you can't adapt, you'll be among the losers. Mm. Right. So that is the attitude you'd have, really. Right. Make friends. Um, you know, and share, you know, and be willing to learn. Mm. I mean, how and did you come to, to that? Be willing to be criticised, so be open to, uh, you know, to, to, to evolving, basically, based on feedback you're getting. Love the criticism. Mm. Love the, even, if, even if the criticism isn't, isn't, isn't good, isn't criticism, right, which you think, why well, you think, well, he, he actually got, he hasn't actually got a point there. Take the criticism. Sure. sure. You know, but what it is, we all have egos. We, you know, we we don't want to be told that we're wrong, yeah. or we're right? You know, really, we should we yeah. should take that. Yeah. You know, what I mean, and maybe okay. If he's thinking, you know, that I'm poor in that situation, let me just go and see if I am and work on it. Yeah. Never, never, never say that you've got it. Mm. That's what most of us think. Say, oh, I've got the system. Never say you've got it. The time you say you've got it, that's the time you've lost it. Mm. We're all still learning. You'll always be learning. You know what I mean? Your greatest teacher is going to be your experience. It's not. It's not going to be 
your actual CFO. Your CFO is a guide, but your experience would be your greatest teacher. And the more experience you can get, the better martial artist you'll be. You know, mm. um, obviously you have to go to the right people. You know, some people are arrogant. Leave those guys alone. Mm. Mm. You know, leave the arrogant guys alone. Well, that that's the ones part of the reason. Share... Yeah, I mean that's mm. part of the reason I think. Part of the reason why. Well, well that you've uh, you've been teaching so long, you ha you've affected so many people in terms of the students you've had. It's because you have that attitude right that open like you open to me when i contacted you a few years ago you didn't know me at all do you know what i mean like i mean what what is it where does that come from in you what, why do you feel you have that attitude um because i know some people they get that cult mentality where they're like a guru almost and then they they know everything and then they stop their students learning because you know it's, i mean why did you kind of go the other way whereas some people have gone you know that sort of cult leader sort of direction uh, well, 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 first, first thing is from 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 my school days, I've always hated bullies. Okay, mm. so, so that, that's that, that, that's that's what I hate. So if I came across a seafood that had that kind of personality, I'm at the door straight yeah. away. Yeah. Now my seafood and your seafood are not those type of dudes. Sure. You know, one comes in very very open. When I met one comes you know, the first time in '97, right? Um, it was at the Athletic Association. I just, I, I was just in there, what's his name? I just uh, finished um, Yip, Chun's, Yip Chun's class. I was sitting there with C4 Yip Chun. He's finished his class. And in an athletic association, it's like a conveyor belt. Another C4 will come in at a right. particular time. And then those times, one time, he never, had his, he never had his school yet. Or if he yeah. did, he was still at the athletic association. He came in, I was just saying, what's see what C4 was going to turn up. And he turned up and he goes, and 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 um, so oh, who are you? And obviously, I had some Cantonese. I said, I'm, I'm you know, Sifu Gamma, I'm, I'm Gary McKenzie, right? From so my Sifu Zip Ching. And I'm just, I just, I just thought I'd just, you know, like to see some of your wing chun. Yeah, no problem. And he just sat there and just, uh, just taught his class like normal. There's only about five students there. And then, and then he's, and then he, um, he's, you know, very open. He said, listen, oh, so, so do you know any more Yan Jong? You know, so I said, oh, yeah, I know a little bit. And he said, okay. And I said, you know, you're playing. I played some. And he's like, oh, and he's, you know, he goes, yeah, very yeah, good. yeah. And he does that one very good. Like this. He goes, now watch me. <laughs> and he went, and he brought the arms, and he brought the, the, the dummy. <laughs> he brought the arms. <laughs> I mean, but so, so like, <laughs> well, what's this? You know, so we, we he brought the arms, he brought the arms. Wow. You are wow. doing pulse out, just bang, bang, and all. <laughs> so I said, about the other seafood, weren't happy. They're like, what am yeah, I going to do with this thing. dummy? <laughs> I can't teach my class now. <laughs> My people were happy. My, he came back to me. He, he goes, he go, where's your arms? I said, I, said, I said, I think, I think someone broke it. I have no idea who did it. He, he, you know, he, he said, oh, he, he said, you're a gato, you know, what, come on, man, what's happening? So, <laughs> so that's what happens. And that's how I met one, and one come learn. But that, but that was, that was from his openness. You know, he could have mm. said, listen, sorry, we've got a class now, do you want to leave it? But the thing is, well, what, when you're, when you're securing your knowledge, and you're securing yourself, you won't be secretive, you won't be cultish, mm. you know, because knowledge is to be shared, mm. you know, not, knowledge is not to be hoarded, like I said before, mm. you know, but what's the benefit of that? Mm. You know, I think it's sinful to be to learn something and not share it, and not leave your legacy. So anyway, he, you know, he, he straight away, he, he opened the doors, you know, um, you know um, for me and allowed me to sit and watch the class, to talk details. So when I said, every time I come to Hong Kong, I'm going to go visit the, um, this particular seafood. And that's how our, mm. our friendship grew. Then we realized that we actually knew, um, I knew some of his, um, his um, Kung Fu brothers, uh, like Sifu Ng Chung Hong, right? um, who was, um, who used to come to the UK and do seminars. And, um, you, you know, so I knew him and, and Zhao Lin Fat Sifu, right, who's passed away. Um, he, um, you know, he was one of, um, Simon Lau's teachers, right? So we were, and we actually knew the same people. Then we used to we used to eat together and, and talk, and, and and it was it was just just a lovely time in those early days in Hong Kong. But it comes from just a, 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 a attitude of of not being afraid to be open and to share. Mm. When, when, mm. when, when you're when you're that way, um, something's wrong with you, man. You know what I mean? It really mm. is. Mm. Right, and you so teach, that... and and. and can you see your question? Yes, you can say. No, no, I was just saying, yeah, no, I, that your your advice really for like younger people, you know, is to have that open mind, basically. And also, I think the language, I think people should know that because of your diligence to learn Cantonese, I think that probably also, especially in the early days, 
probably opened up a cultural, you know, sort of difference that maybe other people wouldn't have been able to bridge, you know, that communication ability. The Cantonese language opened a lot of doors for me, right? It wasn't actually the Wing Chun because they got Wing Chun. And, and if I'm going to travel 6,000 miles across the planet to show them that I, that I, I know Wing Chun also and, and I can do it just as good as you, that's that's a bit arrogant. So for, so, so for, for me, um, I went there with the language with the attitude to learn you know, mm. as much as I can. Yes, I had a C4, right? But if there's others that's willing to share, then, you know, then I'm going to, uh, you know, um take what i can you know if they're willing to share with me right and um and and they're willing to share with me why because like you said because of the language the, mm. the language um showed um these particular seafoods that i cared about them as a people mm. i wasn't coming to just take something and go away mm. which and then i mean no this and this is just a case which many do many do you know what i mean i'll give you an example one time we was at the second world wing chun conference and uh, i was walking with my c4 um at the time just just kicking it with him and then some people came at the time and and they and they they knew that i was you know they, they knew i could speak cantonese right because they see me speaking and they said and they said uh, um sifu gary and, and i said yes they said sifu gary um um is can you ask us a fate could you do a favor for us I said, what's that I said can you ask sifu ching does he mind taking a photograph of us Right. So I'll see we said, could they go on mayor? What did they say? I said, uh see could they say anything, sir? I said, see they they wanna have a photograph, you know. So see they said, could they find more they got are they our people? So I said, see if I won't say I don't know them. He said, he said, I know. He said, no, there's no need. Oh wow. And the reason why he did that, not because he stuck up, because he doesn't want someone to take a cheap shot and say, listen, oh, look, this, I'm looking, I'm with Sifu so-and-so now. Yeah, yeah. The Chinese attitude is they like to do things by introduction. Mm. Right, so, for example, if the first thing he wants to know is, it is it, are they our people? If it's our people, yes, yeah, it's, it's fine. Or do you know them? Yeah, yeah. it's fine. But if it's anybody, yeah. no. Yeah. Even one come learn like that. If you yeah. one come learn Sifu like that, or they all Sifu like that. If... if if I if someone's going to go to to your to the um to um one from school and see him, first thing I say he's going to say who sent you? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's first thing I'm going to say. Who sent you? He, he, uh, um, uh, see, Gary McKenzie sent me. Okay, did he? He didn't call me and tell me. Right, I'll wait until he calls and tell me because there's there's a there's a protocol for this. You know, you just mm. can't just t turn up and flop on someone's door, see for his doorstep like that. It's very disrespectful. Sure. What it is, they like introduction. So if so if you flop. They can complain and say, "Listen, look, mm. see for McKenzie, what are you sending this guy to me for? You know what I mean? Right, he, he really okay. respect him. <laughs> sure, and then sure. I lose face. Then I sure, lose face. Sure. Right. So what? Sure. So what it is? Right. Everything is done in the right way. Right. So when I introduced um, James Sinclair Siva to one come long, you know, he was very happy because this look, he, you know, he heard about um, James Sinclair. You know, when he, the meeting was done, it's like, oh, now that I've got a proper introduction. You know, what I mean, yeah. now we, we we can we can build our relationship. But you just can't turn up. It's just like, you know, what if he does something a little bit sneaky, which some people do? They go there to make a name for themselves. You know what mm, I mean? Mm. Um, and um, you know, so yeah, it's all through introduction and 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 the uh, and things like this of this nature. Mm. But yes, someone off the street would turn up and want to learn in your class. Um, I don't know how you do it, but what I do, if someone does call, they have to make an appointment. And when and when they come and make the appointment, then I sit down with them, and we have a discussion for at least an hour. Oh, about really? Why wow. are they here? Yeah. Wow. Why? Why? Why have you come here? Of the all yeah. the Wing Chun schools in London, why have you decided to come here? You know, I want to. Uh, and and why is that? Because you're looking for a good seafood, but I'm looking for a good student. I just don't want anybody yeah. to come yeah. through my doors. So I will I will in, interview you almost interrogate you, right, to find out, listen, what what is your what is your motive for coming here? Are you are you really serious about learning martial arts or are you like we're calling in Cantonese um Wu Dip Kun, which is which is you flutter from place to place like a butterfly. You know what I mean? Right, from okay. flower to flower. Wow. You know, or, or are, are you are you centered? Mm, mm. You know, so I, I, we do this interview and you can and you can throw questions at me. Nothing's taboo. Mm. You know, so so this is so this is the the, the you know the, the the classical way of doing things, which is which is I've learned from my C4, 
you know what I mean? Is is and, and that's the and that's the way I stick it. So it's not everyone's cup of tea. Mm. You know, most people come to they, these days. They want to coach. They they don't want a seafood. Mm. You know, seafood is about oxidy now. You know, what we have now is gaolin. Coach. Right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's the thing. Is you know, you're, you're, I mean, you're, 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 one, one comes as a C4. He's not a yeah. He's not a coach. No, for sure. For sure. But yeah. I think that's the thing yeah. is you want to, you want to be rewarded <laughs> by coaching uh, Kung Fu, right? And if you're getting students that it's not rewarding, you know, I mean, I once had a student that I, I, I just accidentally saw on Facebook that he was also studying with a different Wing Chun Sifu at the same time and I, I was like it was just sneaky do you know what I mean and like maybe he didn't realize yeah. that it wasn't the dumb thing but I kind of had to kick him out for that you know because it was just annoying because it's more like you know if you one Sifu is telling you your bong sounds here and I'm telling you it's lower or something like it's just annoying <laughs> for me do you know what I mean it's not so much like um anything else so it was just like yeah sometimes you just yeah want people to kind of you want the right people around you, right? You don't want to be around people that bum you out, basically. Absolutely, absolutely. It's not. It's it's, it's not that um, one way is wrong, one way is right, right. Sure. What it is, right, is that it's like take for instance, you're he's he's going to one C four, another C four, and that C four is telling him, right, you know, two plus five is seven. You're yeah. telling him no, it's three plus four. Yeah. Right, and someone else is saying no, no, it's six plus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And you're arguing, the, you know, arguing the case. The main thing is, right, yeah. is, is that listen, look, choose one method of, you know, what you're, you're, you can't, you can't start that way. So, mm. you know, so what I tend to do, right, is when someone comes to me, I want to know why have you come here? You know, what I mean, why have you come? What all the winter schools in London? Why have you come here? Okay, and he tells me his reason. Okay, then, okay, fine. All right, and now this is what's going to happen. You have to do a month's probation period with me, and after that month's probation, you. are you're going to come back, we're going to have a conversation. You might say, uh, well, see for Mackenzie's not really for me. I don't really like the vibe here. You know, it's, you know, I'm, I'm going to make my leave. I said, it can find you, you can go, right? But if after the month you say you want to stay, I'm going to make a decision whether I accept you as my student, mm. right? So, so and, and that's how I see it. It's not just because you're dropping the money and you're going to learn from me. No, what it is, yeah. I will decide whether I accept you as my student. And if I accept you as my student, I will promise I'll teach everything that I know. Mm. And your job is to learn it. Mm. That's that's the deal, right? Mm. And then when that happens, then you become a member. But until mm. then, you know what I mean? Um, you know, you can try and have a mum's probation period if you like. But the main thing is right, is that I, I, I want to hear you say, no, this is this, I want to commit to this now. You know, um, I, I want I want to commit to this to, to this system, right? And I want you to be my C4. And I said, okay, then. Um, I can see you have got the right character. I can see there's you know there's no arrogance there. I can see right that you're gelling now with the guys. The guys like you. You know what I mean? Um, you ain't got an attitude. Yes, okay, then I'll accept you as my student, and then we'll go from there. Mm, interesting. But is there any? Is there... Yeah, yeah I was going to ask because um, is there anything else about Chinese culture? that kind of made you think differently about things or, or something you've taken into your life? Because obviously it's a cultural thing mm. as well, Kung Fu. And like, you know, mm. is there anything about just Chinese culture in general that, I mean, obviously that's a good example of just having that respect and, you know, but is there anything else about Chinese culture that's kind of like influenced how you kind of conduct yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, not, because before when I first studied martial arts, um, with, especially Wing Chun, is it's just to be able to, be, to put my hands up and defend myself. Okay. Um, but since getting into the language, right, could get into language, right? Um, what's made me get more into um, into what right, is the history now, you know, um, of the Wing Chun, the the um, the, the, um, the lineages, and the why. You know what I mean? Why is a bongsa called bongsa? Why is a tansa called a tansa? Why is a yi di kinyama yi kinyama? Mm. You know what I mean? And why why is the system the way it is? You know, and and also there are different expressions because after all, all wing chun is an expression of concepts. You know, mm. and 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 how someone expresses his wing chun, you know, you can't say it's wrong. The time when it's wrong, right, is 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 when it doesn't work, right? That's that's when it's wrong. You know, so so it is. So, so what I got, well, what I got from from it is is uh, from the culture, right? Is is I got really in love with the history of um, mm. of the Wing Chun system. Hence, when I when I go to Hong Kong, I don't just go to Hong Kong, I go to China as well. Wow. Okay. You know? 
So, so, so we go to Fasan, China, and we look at the lineage over there. Mm. Right, and we, we go to to the Lungai school. Yeah, you know, we go to Guok Guok Fu school. We go to um Pang Nan Wing Chun school. Mm. You know, and we, and we and we train with those guys. You know what I mean? Wow. And 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 the students love it out there because it's a different vibe to Hong Kong. Hong Kong is is mm. metropolis. You go to Fasan, China. You know, oh the the, the people, the Chinese, but they're, they're absolutely lovely. Really, really. They're, 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 they're still very, very, and I'd love to take you there. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'll take you there. Yeah, I, take, oh, I'll take you there. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't I'll been to Fatsan. No, I haven't been to Fatsan. No, no. You been to China? I've been to mainland mm -hmm. China. Yeah, Guangxi and uh, Sichuan. Yeah, but not not uh, Fatsan. No, I've been to Wing Chun. Man, you have to go to Fatsan, China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, my friend took me to just bars in Guangxi. <laughs> he went slightly, uh, <laughs> slightly the wrong uh, uh, trip. <laughs> but yeah, I know. I've got, oh, I I've got now, when I when I when I take this the students there, we go we go to um we go to the Zhou Mill, which is the the ancestral temple, and inside oh. there, right, is the Yip Man Tong, the Yip Man Museum. Mm. Oh, sorry. Um, we we um we go to the um the Wing Chun Museum, mm -hmm. and uh, we and we you know students visit there. We go to Wong Fei Hung Museum as well. Wong Fei Hung and visit the museum there. Just go check the whole scene out. There's another place in in Fasan, China called Luo Chun, which is where Yip okay. Man was from. We've got another museum uh -huh. there. We we go there. There's another area called Sun Dat in in Fasan, China. And the people there is where the name Lee comes from. And that's that's Bruce Lee's sort of like family heritage village. Wow. Everyone in that village, their name is Lee. Oh, and they've wow. got and they've got a sort of like a museum to Bruce Lee in there. In, wow. in there. So we we go all that all over that region. Mm. And like I say, we we, we meet with the um, other wing system there and we, and you know and we share. We, we you know we play we play I play my form, they play their forms, and we you know, you know. Then we touch hands, you know what I mean, and and they show us our, their their stuff, and we show, and then we have a little course hour as well, freestyle as well, play, yeah, and it's all and it's all it's all nice, and you can say to the person, listen, look, um, with with your first question, you say, listen, look, we we can do everything now. I mean, we, we're going to go heavy, so yeah, we go heavy, so we go heavy, I mean, really heavy, land the blows as well, but there's no malice, right? Because you, for sure, you you said. So we want to go heavy. We want to push it. We're, we're men. Yeah. Let's, let's push yeah. it. See what we can, our bodies can take. Because like yeah. you said, if you don't test it, yeah, you know, you don't pressure test it. You know, someone throws a punch. I'll do tansa. That's going to work. But if you can, your tansa take the pressure. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so we, we tip everything, and it's no malice. It's, it's lovely. Mm. You get a little split lip here and there. You know, a little um, bloody nose. Because you know, there's no malice. You pay respects afterwards, and yeah. you know, we got we eat afterwards together. It's lovely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, it, because you've been exposed to different variations of Wing Chun, how do you kind of manage that with you, what you teach? Like, do you change things or do you just stick to your Sifu style? Like, how do you manage, like, different kind of inputs to, like, the style? Well, um, for, for me, right, um, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm my Sifu student, you know, um, through and through. But then we could say the same thing right about Wong Tung Leung Sifu. You know, he's Wong Tung Leung's student, but he's not doing it Wong Tung Leung's way. Yeah. You know, he's doing it his way, right? Because Wing Chun is an expression of concepts, right? Mm -hmm. So what it is, I don't do my Wing Chun the way my Sifu taught me. And in fact, right, when when I was, um, you, you know, I was training with, with my uh, Sifu, there's, there's a section on the Mot Yan Zhong, um, on the third section, right? Um, and and the way he does it, not the way I do it. And I actually said, see, for you know, see, I don't want to do it that way. See, so he so he says, them guys, see why? I said, my my whole such I It's not. I don't find it very effective. I don't find it very realistic. And I showed him why. You know, so when I show him why, I said, okay, do it that way. But you can't. She all don't do tricks. See, for gonna do it his way. I'm gonna do it my way. You know, so like mm. like we say, right? You know, the way that works, the way that works is the correct way. Mm. I would say, mm. I would say there's, there's, there's not a what, what they say. They say there's not a there's not a, a wrong way of doing Wing Chun. There's a right way of doing Wing Chun. Mm. Right? So you can't go and say, oh, he's wrong, he's wrong, he's wrong. But mm. it's a right way. The right way is the way that works. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I definitely feel like. 
and it's a big generalization but from what i've seen of japanese culture they are much more about accuracy you know just like beauty and like perfection right whereas chinese culture is actually a bit more relaxed than I, like before i went there you know i was like i remember the first time i went in and like someone was like on the phone so i mean i know this wouldn't fly at your school someone was eating mcdonald's no. i was like what the hell is going on you know? <laughs> um but like you know it, but that was extreme it was very busy at the time i think like one of the my movies had come out or something um but like it, more just like in terms of like you say they're not sometimes not so rigid about like like you say it's like does it work can you show it's effective you know then sure because like yeah, that rigidness, kind of what you were talking about before, uh, can 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 kind of like stifle the open mindedness that you know you 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 know you want. Uh, it depends where you go, James. You see, um, like take it, like take it depends where you go. Right? Yeah, because there are there are um, schools in Hong Kong that are quite rigid, right? But you're right. right. Hong Kong in general, right, is 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 quite relaxed. China isn't though. Yeah, yeah, true, true, you know, true. You know, because they're very, they're very. I mean, you know, kung fu is a national sport. So what it is, right? The way how they do they, their martial arts, their their kung fu, it's their life. You know what I mean? Mm. When they when they do it, they still got that there. You know, mm. so you see some very very um, um, hardcore Wing Chun guys. You know, mm. and especially in Fat San China, Fat San China was a melting pot, mm. right, of martial arts. And this is why when you got um, some of the um, Wing Chun Sifu like Pang Nam, who was who was originally Hong Ga, and then he became student of Yip Man and learned Yip Man Wing Chun. You still see some of the Hong Ga elements in his Wing Chun. Okay, right? they, you know they're very stocky and built and, and 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 stuff like this, you know. But with Hong Kong, the thing what it is is because it's a, it's a metropolis, right? And and Wing Chun has become a pastime, mm. right? So you so you would go right to what's the name of Wing Chun School, especially Athletic Association. No one wears uniform there. No, they come off from work, like at my seafood school, right? This, the the class will start at five thirty, for five thirty to ten. So you come in any time, you come yeah. in, you just roll up your sleeves and start playing skin and towel for, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then after yeah. someone will grab your hand and start playing cheetah with you. There's there's no yeah. formal, you know, of we do a group seed and towel form, then we maybe do a yeah. group some combination we do a group dance so we do a group whatever. Then like, everyone just it's just a free fall inside there. Yeah. And that's why yeah. when I first came to Hong Kong. And I and I went there. I I, I said, "See for uh, yeah, uh, see for warm sun, gum your hot wing chun. I don't want to learn wing chun like this." Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. I said, "See and gum your hot." I said, "I want I want to learn privately from you." And mm. so I took my lessons. I, I I never had not one lesson in that class. In that group, that wow, interesting. Because, cause yeah. it's, it's just I don't want to learn like that. I don't want to. I, I want to be taught. I don't want to just go in there yeah. and just play hands. You know, it's quite loose, I'm... isn't it? I mean, I, I remember when I first trained in Hong Kong, uh, a friend of mine, or he said, like, it's because, like, people live in very small apartments, right? So after work, they don't necessarily want to be, like, you know, sort of, like, crowded <laughs> with their family. Do you know what I mean? They want to go somewhere, <laughs> tell some dirty jokes, you know, like, you know, just yeah. have some fun. And so, yeah, for a Westerner, where we're kind of more, like, we're used to a bit more, like, not military precision, because maybe that's going a bit far, but like, you know, some sort of like class structure, you know, that kind of yeah. thing doesn't really work. Like I, Sometimes I had great training sessions, you know, where just like you happen to go with someone, you know, who's really like open and sharing. And then some training sessions were a total write off. You're like, what the hell? <laughs> I didn't do anything for the last, yeah. you know, two hours of any use. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's an interesting one. I think you're right. I think it's probably a Hong Kong thing more than a sort of general Chinese cultural thing. Because like you say, some of the yeah. northern styles, very strict. Yeah, interesting, very yeah, interesting. Yeah. It, 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 it's kind of, it's, and, it's, and it's, I would say it's more to do with Wing Chun as well. You know what I mean? Because mm. um, you go to most Wing Chun schools, most of them, you know, some mm. don't even wear a, a uniform, you know, of any sort. Mm. Now they most of them wear the T-shirt and they wear something else down, the, anything else down the bottom. But they don't wear mm. a full uniform, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and mm. for me, in, in my schools, I've adopted the full uniform, not just the T-shirt, sure. you know, because, you know, I, I want to get that formality there. I want to get that, obviously martial arts comes with military. I want to make you feel like you're almost, an, you're, you're a soldier, you're, you're a warrior yeah. type yeah. attitude. So, so, we, so, when we, so when we go to Hong Kong, um, you know, the, 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 the people there when we go, we visit, they really love it, you know, because mm. it's, 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 a, it's a complete opposite to what they're used to. Yeah. And uh, when, when, they, when I've been invited to do seminars at, at certain, you know, um, schools there, 
and 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 or I say, listen, you take my students and I'll take your students, and we share. Mm. Um, the first thing I have to say to them is, listen, look, you know, there's not a wrong way or a right way, right? It's just that you're from a different polity to us. You're from a complete different planet, right? You're from different cosmos, right? Mm. In London, we learn the martial arts because someone's going to try and mug us, you know what I mean? Mm. So for us, it's not a pastime, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so, so, so therefore, right, everything is serious, right? The, the training got to be serious. So when we, when we take them through some physical training, they're out of it mm. because it, they're, not, they're not experienced. They're not experienced hitting pads. They're not experienced, you, you know, um, getting on the floor and doing knuckle uh, push-ups and stuff like that. They're not, they're, and most Winston schools, they think, oh, why are we doing this for? Right? You're not going to do push-ups in the street. Sure. Have you have you ever hit someone for real? Mm. Yeah, it's going to hurt your you, knuckles. <laughs> when you're training in school, you're not trying to hit your, opponent, your, your training partner. You need them there for next week. Yeah. You're placing your thoughts, you're controlling all this kind of business. When you keep doing that, that's what's going to happen out there. You're going to do that to someone. He's going to just, what's that? And he's going to blow you away. You have to let your power out. You know what I mean? You have to use equipment. You have to hit something. And like I say to all my students, if you ain't hitting something on a regular basis, don't mm. hit anybody. Mm. You're just gonna mess you're up gonna, your, you're gonna, your you're fist. Gonna, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna damage yourself. You're gonna damage yeah. yourself. And not only that, even worse, you won't hit anybody. Right. Because you're not used to hitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You, you, psychologically, you can't just switch on like that and say, I'm gonna hit someone. Yeah, well, weirdly, you know, I remember. You have to be about that life. Yeah, I, I was once in a bar and I was chatting to a guy next to me and he was a boxer and he was training at, uh, I think, Floyd's gym, right? And he was like, mm -hmm. oh, he had to give up boxing because I had a, a, a kind of organized street fight with someone it was over a woman, right? And he said he hit someone yeah. on the side of their head. And he was like, I didn't realize how hard, because he's always been punching with gloves on, right? Yeah. And he didn't realize how exactly. hard the side of the head was. And he messed up his, his fist and he couldn't box anymore. You know what I mean? It was like, that was it. You know, and it was like, wow, that's okay. <laughs> it's a bit different. But, but, then, but yeah. that's, 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 the that's, the, that's the reality. Of it. But the thing about it is right is the thing is is that he's used to hitting, right? Yeah, for, yeah. You know, for, you know, for, for, for a lot of wings, for a lot of wing from um, you know schools, we don't land the shots mm. with any sort of power, and even with control punches, power. Yeah. We pull yeah. the punches, we place the punches, yeah. right? And that's why other martial look up and say, listen, what are those two guys doing? They see people do cheese. They look at like a couple of guys, right? You know, um, you know, um, you, you know, what, what is playing paddy cake, paddy cake? You know, what I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it doesn't make any sense to them. So it is well. We we got to be real, you know. Yeah. Especially, especially, especially the Chinese. We have they were saying they say yao ji sai mo sa chai, right? It looks good, but it's not real. Right. right? Okay. Like, 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 like you're like you like, um, like one come learn sifu. We use the word sa yong. Sa yong means practical. practical. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Sa chai. Sa means real. Ah, right. So what it is, right? just how your, your martial arts looks beautiful and stuff like this you know that's not what Wing Chun was really about when 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 Yip Man came to Hong Kong right it took out all that superfluous stuff mm. because he knew he was coming to a metropolis right mm. so mm. therefore what it is right according to when I was speaking to Samuel Kwok he said when Yip Man first came was his name to Hong Kong he taught very little Chi out. Oh, okay. And just talk mainly, just mainly just talk fighting techniques. And that's why you've got mm. people like Wong Song, you know, William Chung, you know, um, Bruce Lee, and these these guys, you know, they 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 were always up for the fight because they were fighters. Yeah. Because yeah. you have, you you also have to establish the school. The Winter mm. School is a new kid on the block, mm. right? And you have to establish the school now. And people mm. are only come to if you got if you can produce fighters. Mm. You know, otherwise, what are you coming there for? You're coming there to, to you know, to just play predicate. No, we want to know is what you're doing effective. Yeah. So he had to establish school first. Then later on, he started to teach more sophisticated te techniques. Mm. You know, the, you know, the cheese style was developing now after about three years, and 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 that was, and it was more pushed that way with the cheese style and, and 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 breaking things down stuff like. That. But in in in, in the end. Chain punches, kick entry, chain punches, and drill up the guy, and and, and that's what you you do again for the first, you know, um, year or so. You know what I mean? Mm, According to mm. Samuel Kwok, what he told me. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I totally agree. I mean, for me, Wing Chun's basically two 
in general principles of like off balancing is one part of it, you know, with kind of hand fighting. But then if you don't have the short range power, which is the other part, you kind of like, yeah, you might be very good at like kind of controlling their balance, you know, by making contact, but you're not going to have the second part, which is like actually going to hurt. Is it actually going to hurt the person? You know, because if you have to do 10 chain punches and none of them have any like venom, then <laughs> it's kind of like you're missing a lot of uh, the effect, efficacy of the form of the art, right? Bottom line, right, in, 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 in all combat, you know, power is king. You know what I mean? You know, if, if you, if, if, but you need all three. You know, you need, mm. you need the dam, you need the lick, and you need the kung fu. You know? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you need the, you need the guts. So if you ain't got the guts, you ain't gonna fight nobody. Yeah. Right, you need the power. Because even though you've got the guts, right, and you've got the skill, you ain't gonna hurt no one. <laughs> mm. Right. And you've got the guts and you've got the power, but you've got no skill. You ain't gonna land that shot anyway because you're gonna, you ain't got no skill to sure, even sure. No accuracy or nothing. open up. Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. So, so you need all three. You know what I mean? Mm. But the bottom line, right, is is power. If you can't hurt somebody, you're gonna have a very, very long fight. Mm. You know, mm. a very, very long night. If you can't yeah. put that guy away, and you might just end up just pissing him off more, right? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Making him mad. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's just winding up more because you're, he's hitting, you're hitting him and he's not going nowhere. Right, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely, wow. Cool, well, I mean, I, I don't want to sort of, you know, yeah, thank you again, I, I want, you know, because, again, I just don't want to take up too much of your time, but is there anything else you want to, like, mention in terms of, like, I don't know, kind of, yeah, why people should take up Kung Fu or, or anything you want to talk about in terms of the future of Kung Fu, anything else you want to kind of, like, cover at all? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think what's the name and why people should take up martial art, really, right? Um, um, with the right teacher, you're right? This is really important, you know what I mean? Don't just take up for the sake of taking it. With the right teacher, right? It, because um, it will develop you, um, you know, physically, mentally, I would say spiritually, physically and mentally. And what do I mean by that? I mean, at the end of the day, right, the world is not a nice place, right? You know, um, you know you've know, got, got some people who are not very nice out there, you know, and um, they want to disturb your peace, right? And as the Greek saying says, right, if you want peace, you've got to prepare for war, right? Mm. Being, a, being strong in mind and, 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 and mentally as well, right? And you could, you, you could say spiritually, but when I say spiritual, I don't mean right like, oh, spiritually, just meaning right that you know yourself, mm. right? You don't have this attitude right, of, um, how can I say? Uh, you have this attitude of honor, you know mm. what I'm saying? You know, where, um, and, the pe and, and those people who, are, who, want to, who want to cause trouble, they can feel from your aura, leave him alone. Mm. or leave her alone because he just looks too ready mm. but when you when, when you're when you're not trained in, and i have you it has to be the right teacher when you're not trained in the right way or or um you can go the other way you can become a, a, a bully or you can you know that way or if you have no training whatsoever then you just end up being a victim you walk around mm. on the planet like a sycophant and let people right, put the finger in their face right do what they like to you mm. and you have no honor mm. you know what i mean and 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 after when that happens to you, you basically, especially if you're if you're a man, you feel like someone chief chiefed you off. You just can't mm. sleep at night. So mm. martial arts with the right teacher, right, um, gives you that. And James, everyone needs a teacher. You can't go online and learn this. Mm. You know, you can't you can't go in a book and learn this. You know, you, you and this is why I like the term seafood. You need someone right to. To, to teach you and to guide you right, along your path, right? Mm. You know, to uh, what better word, righteousness, mm. right? That, that, that's, that's what you need. And that's what real martial arts. And I think, um, I think it should be taught from a very, very young age. And um, I don't know if you teach kids, right? but we teach a lot of kids. We we've got kids class and we used to actually teach in schools as well. Right? Wow. Because yeah, we're teaching, we're teaching mainstream schools and we're teaching, um, you know, uh, it's a lot of schools now, you know, because what it is, we want to get these kids right to have an attitude right, of, of honor and, and being um, leaders and being um, um, role models themselves, right? And not, um, you know, sort of like, um, you know, being put, put under pressure, by peer pressure, right? 
um, rather than joining gangs and stuff like this because you know yourself, you know what you're about, right? With the right teacher, right? So we, so we're we're in quite a few schools, right? Teaching mm. kids, you know, we're not teaching them to kick and punch, and and we even teach them how to speak. You know, I mean, if someone, wow. if a bully comes back to you, how to sort of what to say, you know, how to deal with it, and and even if if you end up in a fight, what to say to the teacher? You know, listen, look, mm. you know, teacher, I'm here to learn. You know, I've told you that this guy's bullying me. But now what it is, I had to defend myself, you know, because I've not come here right to be beaten up every single day. Mm. Right. So if you're not gonna if you're not going to put to protect me, I have to protect myself. Yeah. Because I'm not here to be violated by any one teacher. Yeah. Right. All the stuff we give we give the, um, you know, the, the, the kids the script. It's it's so martial arts, I feel, is it should be taught from a very, very young age. Um back in the day we had we had national service, we don't have that anymore. So but mm. we can have martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah. I think it's great that there's some of these like old school virtues you know honor that you talked about like that seem to get lost in this like modern culture you know they're almost like invisible but I think people want them you know people want that kind of uh environment where there's certain like principles um that people have that maybe we sometimes have lost right people just think they'll be happy with this that, and the other but like you say if you can get some of those maybe older virtues and Kung Fu is a way of channeling that sometimes. I think people can be happier, right? Like from a deep, at a deeper level. Absolutely, absolutely. Every, everyone wants, um, no one wants to be violated. Everyone wants to be respected, right? And you know, in martial arts, right, respect is, 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 a big, is a big thing in martial arts, but really what is respect? All respect is, right, is treating others how you would like to be treated, mm. right? That's all it is. Right, no one's gonna if, if unless there's something wrong with them, they're gonna treat themselves bad. No one's gonna you know uh, use bad language to themselves unless unless there's something wrong with them. No one's gonna beat themselves up and something wrong with them. You know, so it is right. Respect is treating someone who you how you would like to be treated. That's all it is. But here's the thing, right? Um, for us in martial arts, right, respect is not earned, right? And people with kids they think this, right? Is that you got to earn your respect, right? You know, respect is not earned. You know, when I first met one come young Sifu, he didn't um I, I didn't he didn't have to try and earn my respect. He commanded my respect. Why? By the way, how he rolls. When you mm. roll a certain way, you carry yourself a certain way, people just they just have to respect you. They have they're compelled to because they feel mm. this, I just like the way God guy goes. Right. Mm. And, and 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 that's what you call a role model. That is what a Sifu is. Right. And 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 from the Sifu, you will see from the students how they are and i keep mentioning one coming on c4 there's other c for this this way my c for the same way right as well is that you can tell this oh sorry i think the because he's he's got um how can i say um he's got a manner about him the students have adopted that man you know what i mean so you can tell the the student the, the c for by the students you know mm. And this is what respect does. You know, you mm. feel like I just want to. That's why they sing in Chinese martial arts, Nei Gan Bingo Ho. You know, who did you follow to learn? It's not, it's not who did you, who did you, did I say, Nei Ho, Nei Gan Bingo Ho, yeah. You know, they don't say, right, who did you, who did you follow? Right, because mm. you're like a, you're like a disciple following the master's way mm. of not just punching, but just his way of doing things. Mm. You know, so all of all of one come along students, I know the way they like you, you always address me as C4. Every single mm. what's the name one come along student addresses me as a as C4. Mm. Why? Because mm. he's probably instructed them, listen, look, when you meet C this C4, he's C4, 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 C4. Mm. Right. And that's how I do with my students. When you meet a C4, right, he's the C4, this is C4. You you address them by titles, not by mm. names. Mm. This is this is another thing with Chinese martial arts and, and the like, Chinese tradition. Right, which I found very appealing, you know what I mean? Which you miss, right? Sometimes when you get in the modified sort of like way of doing things. Mm, so it's yeah. values, and, 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 you're imparting the values as well as the actual techniques. Absolutely, abs abs absolutely. You know, um, we, we don't get off on the combat side of it so much, you know, because really what it is, James, right? You know, combat, when you do it, is an uncivilized action that is done when it's necessary. You know what I mean? We, we don't get off on fighting. We fight because we have to, not because we want to. Mm. Or, or because we want to, you know, get a trophy or, or earn money. What it is, right, is that it's some 
I will say this to my students. This is probably the only thing that you're going to learn that you hope you never have to use. Right? This, this is what martial art is. You hope you never have to hit anybody. But if you do, you know, do it properly. You know what I mean? Mm. Hence, we learn the, hence, we learn the skill, you know, of we learn the skill of violence, right? You know, so we learn how to do it properly. So the job is done very, very quickly. You can get out of there. Not what's his name is. It's taking hours and, you know, you know, rolling about on the floor and all this kind of, no, just bing, bang, over, get out. That's it. Because we don't mm. enjoy fighting. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. It's not civilized. Mm, Better definitely. things to do with life and fighting and hurting someone. Mm. Anyway, I've bored you enough, brother. <laughs> no, no, it's been it's been amazing. Well, yeah, thank you so much. I mean, where can people find you if they want to kind of like, you know, maybe you know, ask to, to visit and that kind of thing? Like, where, where, what's the kind of uh, thing they should look for? Well, just go to the website or um, or, or go to Instagram or go to the to the Facebook page, just the and then they can find me there. Just give me a call. And then I've then um, you know, we'll invite you, we'll invite you down. You can come down to the school. And if you like what we do, then we can go from there. You know, that's that's as easy as it's done, really. Really? You know? All but right. Well, good seeing you again, you know, um, uh, you know, it's it's, it's nice no, seeing you, you know what I mean? It's a vice pleasure. We can meet up for a tea one day. Hey, that'd be amazing. Yeah, I'll take you for yum cha. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you again, Sifu, and I hope you have a good, uh, you know, rest of the day. Okay, you take care. Look, at, take care of yourself, and All right. uh, give my regards to one Sifu as well, and the rest of your team. Yeah, I will do. I will do. Take care. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.